Hey guys, Nigel here, Nigel's Modern Bench, and a long-awaited video this one. Uh, quite a few people have asked for this video, and it's taken me a while to get around to it, but um, finally we're here. I've got a couple of hours spare, and uh, I just thought I'd get it done. So, basically this is going to be um, pretty much aimed at beginners, or the, the, the lesser experienced modellers. And the question has been, Nigel, would you please do a video about the different kit manufacturers and the pros and cons with their kits, um, basically aimed at the beginner. So uh, what I'm gonna do is, I've got a few kits here from different manufacturers. Um, I'm trying to get them in alphabetical order. If I've made a mistake, uh, tell me in the comments. Um, but basically, yeah, a few kits from different manufacturers and just a few pros and cons from my experience. And as I say, this is my interpretation of what these kits mean. Um, what they are. Um, there's going to be outsiders out there. There's going to be, you know, th there are Tamiya kits that are absolutely amazing. There is one particular Tamiya kit I can think of that's absolutely awful. Um, so when I actually say this manufacturer is this, it has this, it has this, I'm talking generally, okay? So please don't go crazy in the comments below saying, oh, no, you're wrong because this one was this and this one was that. So just, just bear in mind that it's, um, it's, it's a general overview of the manufacturers that I'm talking about and I've got a range of kits here it's not all aircraft I've got helicopters I've got aircraft I've got cars um well I've got cars I've got trucks so uh so basically what let's have a look and see what we've got and as I say I've tried to do this in alphabetical order so there's no sort of preference over anything so first off the block is here this is academy uh, this is a 35th scale um Huey heavy hog as you can see it's a beautiful kit um the only other option for this one, you've got the Dragon kit as well, which I believe is the um, is a expander kit, but that's another story. So basically, Academy, they do a very wide range of models, very very interesting subjects, um, always beautifully moulded. They, in my experience, they seem to fit together beautifully. They're not the finest detailed kits in the world. Um, I think Tamiya are probably better in, the, in, in fine detail, but they are beautifully made, pretty easy to build, and their instructions and everything are generally pretty good. But you can see here, everything's individually bagged. The sprues are on, on frames, square frames like this. Some of the older kits had the, like the old AMT kits, you'll remember, they had the sprues which were just like a like your hand and all the parts were coming off of them and you know not very good at all the old airfix was like that as well but yeah the, the sprues are all beautifully bagged even e equally packaged you can see the clear parts there are packaged in a bag inside that bag so they can't get moving around and scratching and everything and as you can see all lovely molding lovely um there's raised and recessed panel lines very very nice crisp detail um and then we've got a lovely set of decals, Academy decals normally go down lovely, they're very very nice, although this one is 2002 so these are what 19 years old now so they may not go down so well, um, hints and tips, warnings and then you've got a, um, a painting and decal placement guide here which is in black and white which a lot of people moan about but I don't really worry about it to be honest because it's green you know um it's green and it has some black bits on it so really it's more of a decal guide than a, than a painting guide so well, there you go and then you've got your instructions now you've got a sprue layout which is always good some of the tamiya kits these days don't have it but it's good to have a sprue layout so you um so you know what you're working with and down here it says unused parts um if you are a beginner, something I advise, something I always do is if they've got this, I generally go through and take those parts off, bag them up and put them in the box. That way, if it comes, if it's say B44, is say it's these two parts here, say one of those is B44, you won't accidentally use the wrong one. So if it's say a, um, you know, a, a leather shroud over a gun muzzle or something, maybe one fits another kit and one's for this kit, you won't accidentally use the wrong one. So I generally take them off first, bag them up and put them in the box. Um, but the instructions, beautifully laid out. Again, you've got this symbol type thing, so there's no real wording. But, um, and you've got colour call outs all the way through. So you've got your, your paints called out here. Okay, now they've given no manufacturer. All they've given you is a colour. OK, but there is an FS guide there, so it gives you an idea. So a lot of manufacturers these days are being 
they're sort of linking themselves to one paint manufacturer. Ammo, MIG and um, AK seem to be the, the two biggest culprits. So you'll only have the call outs in their colours. But here they've gone on and they've just given you the actual colours themselves. So what you've got to do is go and find those. And there's some more paint call outs there, like you see. And then all the way through the kit, they've given you all the paint call outs all the way through for all the different colours as you're going on. So very nicely done. Um, it's a real aircraft that they're modeling there. It will be a real aircraft from Vietnam or whatever, Korea. Um, and, and there you go. So there we are. So that's the, that's Academy. Overall, um, you know, very, very good up in the top, top ranks of manufacturers. Um, I don't know of a bad kit from Academy. Um, they're also called MRC. So you could bear that in mind as well. Um, Model Resource Centre, I think that was. Um, so just bear in mind, they're from Korea. So uh, have a look through, have a look through their catalogue, have a look online if there's something there you like. Their 30 second scale aircraft are lovely. So uh, go get yourself one. That, but for the beginner, I would say very good kit, very easily, uh, very easily done. Now, next off the block is Airfix. Now this is, I've got an old Airfix kit and a new Airfix kit to show you the difference. Now, this one here, you can see it's been not started, but I removed some parts from the sprues because I was going to mop, I was going to make this up into a 48 scale. And then I realized you could actually buy one. So I was going to make a fuel tanker in 48 scale. But here we can see, this is what I was talking about just now. Here we've got sprues that don't have the frame around them. They're just all, you know, it's just like a hand and it's all the parts are coming off the sides. So this is where you can get parts getting broken, getting damaged very easily. The other thing is everything's all just put in one bag. Uh, this is one of the Airfix's biggest problems. Um, other manufacturers do it as well. They just chuck everything in one bag and there you go. And then it just gets chucked in a box like this, which has got loads and loads of room in it. And, and there you go. Um, instructions, very, very basic. Black and white fold out um, instructions. So you can see here it starts like that so you've got some wording on the front all about what the trucks are and then you go over the page and you are straight into here's your um, hints and tips a bit of health and safety as well i expect and you've got your icons um, and symbols for the build and then you're straight into the build and as you can see quite complex not very good for the younger beginner um, just sort of lots and lots to do in one section and there's just sort of a pointer going to where the parts need to go. So not really ideal, the older Airfix for the younger starter. Having said that, I've had a lot of people say to me, you know, like the um, the Revell Monogram B52. I've had a lot of people say, you know, that's not a beginner's kit. Well, it is. It was, it was made in 1968 and it was designed for children over 14 years old. So, you know, either as a race, we've become less clever or we expect more, so we expect things to be easier, I don't know. But that's old Airfix. Now, newer Airfix, I have got a couple of 72nd scale Lancasters, but I can't find them. Um, so I've got this. This is the, the 24 scale Hellcat. It's a huge model, but the reason I've got this is to show you modern Airfix, and this is what modern Airfix is like. Um, if I can get the bloody box open. Come on, right, here we go. Right, so this is modern Airfix. It's much, much better than old Airfix. And this is the third Hellcat I bought. I bought this basically so I could do pictures to show you how the fuel tank's fitted. Um, but this is basically modern Airfix. You can see all the sprues are square frames. Okay, they are um, beautifully made to fit the box. So they don't all rattle around. I mean, ignore this top one. This is what I've done. I've cut this off. Um, to, to get these parts out. You've got clear parts here separately bagged, wrapped in bubble wrap and a kitchen towel, which is a really nice touch, so they don't get damaged at all. And then you go through the sprues and you can see they're all, if you can see, they're all the same sort of size. So they all fit in the box beautifully and they all don't get damaged, okay? One of the issues with this kit, a lot of people had flattened parts. Um, Airfix, the only downside I think to Airfix, well there's, there's three downsides actually, the plastic always has a grainy finish to it, um, the plastic is always very soft, it's this light grey, very very soft, you can see here how flexible that is, I mean it's just it's ridiculously flexible, um, very very soft, which does help against breakage I suppose, but um, 
the other problem with Airfix, their quality control is not good. Um, they've had, you know, there's always issues with clear parts. The uh, the 24 scale Typhoon had a, a divot in the in the canopy, so they sent out a load of replacements, and they also had divots in them. I've got three Lancaster kits. They've got um, hairlines in the clear parts. Airfix have basically told me it's part of the manufacturing process. Uh, okay. So as a processing engineer myself, who's worked with injection moulding, I would have done something to get rid of the hairlines, like Trumpeter and every other manufacturer on the planet does. But um, no, Airfix have just said it's part of the manufacturing process. So a bit of a downside there for Airfix. Um, but with this kit, it is a beautiful kit. Some people have complained about parts being flattened, and it almost seems like maybe the sprues are being taken out of the mould and then stacked, and the ones at the bottom that aren't quite cured are just getting flattened. So um, it's not a major issue, it's just, you know, it's just something you have to overcome when you're building it. This isn't really much of a beginner's kit. Having said that, somebody who's new to the hobby probably wouldn't have much trouble with it because it goes together beautifully. Um, it really does go together beautifully. Now, I haven't got the instructions out purely because the instructions for this kit come in a great big bag with the colour painting guides and decals and everything, and it's all sealed up. Now... There's no point in me opening this one up because I have one here. And this is from the Hellcat, one of the Hellcats I'm building. So, which I need to get my ass in here and get done. So, basically with the newer Airfix kits, you can see you've got a lovely great big decal sheet there. You've got a colour call-out guide for all your painting and everything, which is what you basically get with Airfix these days, pretty much on the larger kits. And then you've got a stencil data call-out there which you're going to get again on the larger kits. Some of the smaller stuff won't have it, but the general instructions now that Airfix do are very, very beginner friendly. So same as I showed you with these two refueling trucks, you've got wording on the front all about the, um, all about the history of the aircraft in this case. And there's some hints and tips here about washing parts and stuff. Um, and then they've got here, you've got to decide whether you're going to do wings folded up. But you can see here with the building, it's very, very clear, and there's not go not a lot going on in each step. And there's very, very clear arrows that show exactly where parts go. So it's showing you, let's find one, it's showing you here, this part, D19, that's the number of the part. That's what colour it should be painted, and you've got an arrow there pointing directly at that hole. Okay? And then what they're doing here with the red, they're showing you what you've done in the previous, hang on a second... Yeah, they're showing you what's gone in on the previous step. Now, in this case, they're showing you number three because number four was that, and you can see those parts have gone on. So you can see here that in step five, we're adding this part D14 is the only piece, and then we're going to add that bulkhead to that floor pan, and then you can see that part there is coloured in red. And then we move along here, we should see... No, we're not getting to see this. Yes, we are, down here, over here. We've got that part coloured in red. So it's very, very clear. So it's showing you how the parts go from the last step. So if you're looking at this and you're thinking, I really don't know how that goes together, there it is. Okay, so that's the that's a nice touch. Um, and it's, all, it's the same all the way through. And they've made it very, very clear. And you've got these obvious symbols here. You know, this is the aircraft undercarriage up, wings out. Um, and then for all three types, you've got undercarriage up, wings out, undercarriage down, wings folded, undercarriage down, wings out. And it's very, very clear how it all goes together and very, very simply laid out. So kudos to Airfix for their instructions. They really are great. Um, but as I say, downside with Airfix, quality control, soft plastic and grainy finish. Um, and... And on some of the kits, like the Airfix, um, I haven't built it, but I've seen reviews, one of their 48 scale Spitfires, the bubble canopy one, apparently the fit of that is dire. But um, basically, as a kit to build, they're pretty good. Um, I wouldn't say they're as good as Academy. They're certainly not as good as Tamiya. But, um, you know, they're on par with some of the Revell kits, although there are some Revell that are better. So next off the block, um, again, alphabetically... Here we've got AMK upside down. AMK MiG-31 Fox. I'm not going to spend too long on this because AMK are a fairly small company. They've only got a couple of kits in their range. And I'm not even sure if they're still going. Um, but I've got this one and I've got their F-14, which is, which is gorgeous. And you can see straight away with AMK, the boxing is beautiful. Okay, it's, it's packaged beautifully. 
the sprues are molded beautifully pa um, rivet lining panel lining on this is a bit heavy but the this is an extra part that doesn't come with the kit that's an additional extra but basically you can see all the sprues beautifully molded beautifully packaged um, apparently they go together very well I haven't built one uh, the instructions are gorgeous you've got the color call outs there okay and then you've got your decal placements here okay and there's all your different options and then I'm not sure if in the back we get a sprue call out yes we do so sprue call out in this one so uh, 10 out of 10 for that one lovely instructions a little bit complex and not very clear so maybe not for the beginner but um, there's a lot going on in each step and they've got these arrows showing you where everything goes and a lot of things to something to bear in mind with these newer Asian companies something to bear in mind is there's often in mistakes in the instructions such as showing you a position where a part goes the orientation of a part um, the part number and the other thing you'll find with a lot of these um, newer companies or well, not newer companies trumpeter and hobby boss are guilty of it you'll be building your model and all of a sudden you hang on a minute and there'll be something up here you know like um, these strakes on the wings say those strakes are there I mean they are, they are caught up in instructions but just just forget that's there all of a sudden these strakes appear on the wings and you're like where did they come from <laughs> you know um, so you have to be very very careful it's not always as obvious as that it'll be smaller parts that are in cockpits and stuff and all of a sudden they just appear you know um, so AMK as I say I'm not going to spend too long on AMK very good manufacturer but a very limited range and as I say I'm not even sure if they're still about so put that over there so next off the block this is another unusual one is Edward Edward um, Edward have become since the days of this they've become a, a sort of manufacturer on their own Edward started out doing photo etch then they got into resin and then they got into kits and what they've started doing what, what they started doing is these limited edition kits and basically what they do with these they take someone else's kit the plastic parts and they rebox it with their own decals and some upgrade parts so you can see on here we've got all these options here to build these f16s in and you've got these resin parts and these photo etch parts so what they're telling you in here is you're getting all these extra bits and pieces now this is i believe this is um a kitty hawk or kinetic kit i think it's called kinetic um, you can see it's all just chucked in one bag uh, it can all roll around and get damaged there is a bag in the bag there's two bags in the bag but basically it's all in, all these main sprues are just in one bag and they can all roll around and get damaged which is a shame um, but the clear parts in there are separately bagged with that but um, it's always worth doing your research if you look at one of these Edward kits um, you know such as the Lysander or the MiG-29 I can tell you now the 48 scale Typhoon I started doing a build of, the, of it on here and ended up throwing it in the bin so you know take from that what you like but um it's always worth doing some research because although it may be a beautiful model with lots of photo etch and resin and lots of decals and stuff which this one's certainly got it could be that the base kit isn't very good at all and also um <clears throat> the issue i had with the with the typhoon was that the resin parts provided or the photo etch parts provided didn't fit so what well, there we go so there's the instructions now you get a as I say, you get beautiful decal sheets with all the stencils and all the different choices you've got for all your different liveries. Um, they're very, very nice and neat. I'm sorry if the light seems a bit dim. It's because of all the glossiness we're looking at. But um, so there you get your instructions and they are very nicely laid out. I would say they're not for the beginner, but for, you know, somebody with a few kits under the belt, there'd be no problem. You can see your sprue call outs here and you've got the coloured and the blue shaded in areas. They're the bits you're not going to use again. Cut them off, put them in a bag, chuck them in the box, just so you don't make a mistake and use them. Um, and then you've got your resin parts and your photo etch parts and your masks and everything called out here. So you can see as you go through, the beauty of these, if you buy a model kit and then you buy a uh, photo etch set, nowhere do you ever get to know where to fit the parts. Not where to physically place them, but at what stage in assembly should you fit the photo etch parts. And whereas with these kits, because Edward have done the instructions, they're telling you, you know, remove this raised detail, fit this piece of PE, fit this piece of PE, do it now. Cut these off, fit the pedals now. You know, same thing, they're telling you to do modifications here. And all the way through, they'll tell you when to actually do the, add the parts, when to do the mods. Okay, so that is the beauty. And you also get these lovely colour callouts 
for all your all your deco your decals and everything. As I say, I don't really worry about the colour callouts. A lot of people um, get really hung up on not having colour callouts. So that's Edward. Again, Edward have now become a manufacturer in their own right of plastic models. Their Tempest looks absolutely stunning. Um, trying to think what else. Their one, their BF110 range is um, is a really nice range of kits, I believe. But uh, really worth taking. I've got this one and I've got their MiG-29. The MiG-29 is an Academy model. Of course, since then, the Great War Hobby MiG-29 has come out, which has blown it away. So there we go. Next off the block, we'll have a little break after this one, is Itinerary. Now, this is a 48 scale Itinerary helicopter, obviously. And I've used this one because it's a fairly good example of what Itinerary do. Now... A lot of people give Etelari a hard time and they don't like them. Um, some of the Etelari kits are are nice, but what you have to be careful of with Etelari is, and Airfix have started doing it now as well, is they rebox other people's kits. So if you take the B-52, for example, the 172nd scale Etelari B-52, G or H, okay, don't get it confused with the Revell monogram kit, it's not the same kit. The Itinerary B-52 is a reboxing of AMT's old kit, which is 1989, I believe, and it's not very good. Um, as far as accuracy goes, quality of plastic, going together, fit and everything, it's not a very good kit. Certainly not for the beginner. It's buildable. Um, it's highly buildable. I've seen a lot of beautiful examples of it, but when it's built, it just looks all wrong. So um, the wing angle's wrong and the tail's too skinny. It's got no bomb bay. As I say, the plastic's very soft, the engines are too small, uh, the nose is the wrong shape, you know, I could go on. So, um, this kit here, now these parts are loose. Okay, they're loose because they've come out of their bag. Right, now I know I bought this, I bought this when it first came out and I did a, a magazine, not a magazine, um, an internet uh, website review of it, that's why the bags are open. But basically, it's hilarious. I really like them. Some of their newer stuff is really good. Um, here you can see the moulding is very, very nice. You've got the, the curve is moulded into the blades. We've got flat spotted tyres. You've got a nice sprue. There's not a lot of flash. You've got fairly small attachment points. You've got a little bit of photo etch in there. Again, here we've got a big sprue with a frame around it, so it's not going to fall around. It's fitted to the box. It's very, very nicely done indeed. You can see there's one out of the bag here. So. In fact, probably these came back together, so a few marks taken away for that. But uh, you can see very, very crisp detailing. You can see the detail on that nose section there. It's very, very crisp. Uh, very, very nicely done. And as I say, no real flash or anything. Um, and I, I, as I said, I really like them. I, I don't have a problem with Itinerary. Now, some of you will probably tell me you've got examples of Itinerary kits that are awful. Every Itinerary kit I've ever built... I've liked. Um, you've got lovely decal sheets with them. You can see there's a beautiful decal sheet with stencils and everything on it. So all very, very nice. The instructions I find are very clear. Okay, you've got your sprue call outs as well. The instructions I find are very clear, very easy to follow, um, very easy for the beginner. You've got harnesses included, look, which is another nice touch. Um, and you've got color call outs here, the black circles. They are your colour callouts, and then if we find the colour callouts, will they be at the front or the back? Yeah, they are calling out their own paints. Okay, so you've got Itinerary and Model Master. Um, I don't think many people use either of those, but they have given you the FS colours, so you can go in the net, find the equivalent colours, and just uh, go from there. But um, very nice model this one. I've seen it built up. I must get around to doing it one day. I don't call ever build a helicopter, but it is a, a very nice model, very nice instructions. You can see all the all the call outs there again, not in colour, but hey, you know what what's the problem? It's it's RAF blue grey and it's red. And you can see the difference in the colours, same here. Flat black, dark green, dark sea grey. It's it's not difficult to see without having a, the grey and the green in front of you. But again, clearly laid out. Very, very nicely done, and a, a company, Itinerary is a company I I recommend um, on most of their kits. But do your research first, Scalmix is your friend, do your research, as with all manufacturers, Ravel, Itinerary, Ravel and Itinerary are probably the two most guilty companies of doing it. They rebox other people's kits. Now, sometimes that's a good thing, 
quite often it's a bad thing, unfortunately. But this is it's an Aries own kit, okay? So there we go. Next off the block here, we've got one of our Rolls Royce manufacturers here. Great War Hobby. I'm just checking to get this in. Right. Great War Hobby. This is their uh, F15 e Strike Eagle. Um, they are stunning. They are beautifully made. Not for the beginner, I would say. Now, as you can see, you've got lots and lots and lots of sprues all chucked in a box, all, all sort of bagged up in pairs or individually bagged. And you can see there, they're beautifully done. Now, there's some parts being cut out of there. That's not me, that's them. They've done that. So, um, and the moulding is absolutely gorgeous. Really, really fine recessed panel lines. Lots and lots of weapons in there. You can see here is the main fuselage sections individually bagged. And I can just get up here and show you the... The beautiful moulding, you've got the rivet detail in the, and the fastener detail. Really, really nicely done. Beautiful seats. Absolutely gorgeous. Lovely, lovely moulding. Now, with instructions, they're going to be at the bottom of the box here. Again, these are going to be beautifully done. Lovely decals. Beautiful photo etch. You know, um, here's your sprue call out on a separate sheet, which is a nice touch. For some reason, it's printed on both sides. But your sprue call out, you've got all your non-used parts. Again, cut them off, put them in a bag. Uh, they've already cut these off for you. Um, so, yeah, it's it's nice to have this as a separate part so you can have it to the side. Another nice touch is to have the colour call outs on a separate sheet, but they've got them here. Now, they've only given you the option here. This is one of the problems for the newer starters. They've given you here C3. Now, C3... Uh, oh, they've got MIG as well. Um, if you're new to the hobby, don't use these paints. Um, C3 is basically a colour code for Mr. Colour, uh, Mr. Hobby paints. So you've got your guns, Mr. Hobby, um, aqueous paints. They're H. And then you've got your C, which is your salt, your um, lacquer paints. So they're only giving you a call out here for C colours. So you need to find what colour C is. I mean, here it t tells you it's tyre black. So you can use H71, I think it is, is tyre black in the aqueous range. Because not many people use these because they're a bit of a health hazard, those paints. Um, and they've got the metal colours here. So they've got the, the numbers called out, the FS numbers there for you. Um, so your 36118 there is C305, which is also H305, I think. Um, so you need to do some research before you start getting your paints. They're only, as I say, they're only giving you the C and the Ammo MIG, so it's not very, uh, not very good for colour callouts. Now the instruction book is not stapled together. It's all just loose sheets that are all going to fall apart on you, which is not such a bad thing. It means you don't have to have a book in front of you all the time. But you've got the, your instructions here, um, not the clearest instructions. And as I said before, with AMK. There's probably going to be mistakes in here. There's going to be parts missed out and they're not going to be that easy to follow. Certainly not a kit for the beginner, um, but for the, you know, for the average modeler who's got a few kits under his belt, go treat yourself to a Great War Hobbies model. They are beautiful. Um, I've got a feeling they're part of Bronco. Now, Bronco do a range of kits, mainly AFVs. Um, and they are very, very close to the real thing We've got decals in here which are absolutely beautiful i believe they're quite thick which can be an issue um so something worth looking into but great war hobby on the whole fantastic manufacturer beautiful kits but as i say not really for the beginner at all um they're also quite pricey this one is about 80 pounds retail i believe so um you know, if you, if you just want a 48 scale F15 and you're new to the hobby, perhaps look at the monogram one. So, um, there we go. Cool, let's have a break. Okay, we're back. So now we're on to H and we've got uh, Hasegawa. So, Hasegawa, been going for donkey's years, Japanese manufacturer, very highly respected, very highly thought of as far as accuracy and shape goes. Some of the earlier kits raised panel lines. Um, best to do your research and check out what it is you're getting first. I can tell you this kit here is one of their best. It's absolutely gorgeous. You can get this one in 30 second scale from Hasegao. You can also get it in uh, 30 second scale from Zuka Mure. But this kit, I think, is, um, is absolutely stunning. So generally, this kit's 2011. I think probably 2000 on, the kit's got a lot better. 
um, but as I say, some of their earlier kits, you need to be very careful. Again, scale makes is your friend. Do some research. Check out, look at video reviews, magazine reviews, online reviews, and look out to see if it's got raised panel lines or whatever. Because there's nothing wrong with raised panel lines per se, but um, you know, generally people prefer scribe panel lines rather than raised ones, and they're easier to re you know reintroduce on a fuselage seam or whatever. So that's something to look out for. So. Again, Hasegawa, beautifully moulded kits. You can see lovely clear parts, very, very crystal clear. Square sprues, protecting everything beautifully. Um, separate cowl there, which has been uh, slide moulded, perhaps. Um, yes. So, um, again, everything is in one bag, which is a shame. But the sprues are all square, so they can't all sort of rattle around too much. Uh, when I say rattle around too much, what I mean is when you get a box like Ravel have done with their um, Titanic gift set, you've got, you know, the, the kit would fit in a box this size and the box is like the size of that 24 scale Hellcat I showed you. I'm exaggerating. But um, beautifully moulded, very, very crisp, clean moulding, really nicely done. Um, you can see you've got some detail there in the undercarriage bays. So Hasegawa have come on a long way. Um, as far as the sort of the internal detail goes, they've always been very good with accuracy, shape, and everything. But their panel lining has only, you know, in the last few years become uh, recessed. So best to look out for what it is you're buying, as I say. But you could certainly build this as a beginner. It'll go together beautifully. Um, and we'll just look at what else is in the box here. There's a separate screw. These are probably some alternate parts for a different uh, model, different type of aircraft. And then you've got. Lovely in um, instructions, lovely decal sheet which will go down beautifully. Hasegawa decals are gorgeous, so they will go down lovely. And then we've got a profile thing there, whatever that is. And then we've got an instruction book, um, which is well, this is no, this is a cartoon. So <laughs> you've got a, a cartoon sort of here. This is in the Japanese style, obviously starting from the back, working forward if you're uh, if you're European, so um, or American. So there we go. So we've got a cartoon there, a comic book. Got a model art profile, we've got a decal sheet there, a sprue, a bag of sprues, an engine cowl, and some clear parts. Now the instructions, beautifully done. Again, you've got all the colour callouts. Now on here, they've given you, this is all Mr. Hobby, so you've got H down the side here and C down there. So these are the solvent paints or the lacquer paints and these are the aqueous. So these are all um, Mr. Hobby colours. Okay, so uh, and they're explaining all that what I'm telling you here. So sprue layouts there, they're telling you which parts aren't going to be used. It looks like it's just a clear part in this case. And then you've got very, very clear instructions. You know, each part going together, each sub-assembly going together and then all coming together at the end. Very, very clearly showing you where the parts go. All the colour colours, you've got some interior decals there going in. So very, very nicely done indeed. And as I say, no problem for beginners. Pilot figure there with colour call out should you wish to add him. Um, very, very nice. But as I say, you get no um, photo etch. There's no um, photo etch seat belts or anything. So look out for uh, for aftermarket sets. You can get the Eddard Big Ed set for this, which I think I've got. Um, and you know really make it into a stunning masterpiece beautiful looking aircraft uh another one i should really get around to one day i haven't, I haven't long enough left on this planet to do all these models but again hasagawa really really top grade manufacturer up there you know with the likes of tamio in my opinion very nice plastic fairly hard generally very glossy beautifully smooth unlike the, the grainy finish i talked about on airfix very really nice kits very very nice to work with um you know Pretty much 10 out of 10, I'd say. Very, very nice models indeed. So then, um, here we go. Kitty Hawk. Right. This is a cat I've only recently bought on eBay second hand. Got it cheap, so I'm happy with it. Um, Kitty Hawk are... <laughs> a lot of people have a love-hate relationship with Kitty Hawk. I actually like them. Um, I like the way they go together. I'm not a great fan of their... Um, of the way they do things it's like they tend to build 
an airplane fuselage out of 47 parts rather than two halves. Perfect example, if you look at their, go and have a look at the review of their SU-22 or, or, or Su-22 Su or Su-17, I can't remember which one it is, but the fuselage is made up in about 12 sections. It's a joke. Um, and their instructions, their build order tends to be a bit out there. But beautiful boxes, uh, lovely colour call-outs on the side of the boxes. This one came with some Eddard masks in it. Now the previous owner of this has actually taken the colour call-outs out. Now it's a very strange thing with Kitty Hawk what they do. They put these in the middle of the instruction book. Okay, so you'll be merrily building away and all of a sudden you'll find... Uh, here you go, you're going to find like this in the middle of the book, okay? So all of a sudden you've got that, all right? And then you turn the page, okay? You turn the page and you've got that. Hang on a minute. And you're looking at it and you're thinking, this is a bit strange. This is the top, this is the bottom, but this is eggplant. And, and what they do is, this. that's what you're looking at. And what you're supposed to do is, what this person has done, is take it all out of the pull out of the instructions and then you've got separate call outs okay so a lot of people get confused like you need to be very very careful particularly if it's something like um you know like a like an f15 where they're all gray um you know you may when you get this sort of thing where you open it up you, you may not notice and what you've got is this is the tail end of one aircraft and this is the front end of another aircraft and you'll end up putting decals on for one here, another one, and one for the other aircraft here, because you haven't noticed because it's all grey and it all just fits together beautifully on the seam line look. So be very careful of that. They are actually like that, <laughs> or like that, not, not like that. Okay. Um, but the instructions, if you're following along with the Bronco uh, build that I'm doing from Kitty Hawk, which I again need to get on with. Um, the, the build sequence of that model is an absolute and utter joke. Now this one I haven't really looked at. It's very, very... This seems this one seems okay actually. You're, you're assembling undercarriage bays. Um, you're assembling that into the lower fuselage. You've done the upper fuselage. You're, it's a bit strange. You, you're doing work on the upper fuselage. Then you're doing work on the lower fuselage. And then you're starting on the engines. And then you're putting it all together. So... You know, it's a, bit, it's a bit weird. Why not do the engines first? And I believe these engines are wrong. But um, you've got your wings going together there. Again, instructions are fairly easy to follow, but I would say not for the beginner because they have this crazy build sequence, which on this one doesn't seem so bad, to be honest. Um, excuse me if you heard that, my stomach just rumbled. And you've got your weapons call-outs here, and then you've got your weapons placements there. So overall, instructions are okay, but... You know, do some research first. Um, we've got clear parts here. We've got two lots of clear parts. I don't know if I'm just lucky or if they're supposed to be. Two lots of clear parts. Um, they're both the same. So, And then we've got parts here which are just chucked in a bag. You know, easily damaged. And then we've got all our sprues here, bagged up. They're all in these soft plastic bags rather than the harder, crisper bags. Um... Which really makes not a lot of difference. The only beauty of it is the harder crisper bags, like Great War Hobby use, um, the plastic parts, the, the bags will slide over each other rather than dig into each other like these will. But again, lovely moulding, really, really crisp and clean. And if I can get it in the camera to show you, if I can get it to focus, you can see we've got some lovely rivet detail in there. Very, very nicely done. But how does it fit together? I don't know. Um, Dukes, if you're interested in the Su-35, Dukes um, Hobbies, Matt's done a, um, a build comparison with this one and the, and the Great War Hobbies. I believe the Great War Hobby kit wins hands down, but price-wise, um, as I say, I got this second hand, I paid £40 for it. So, you know, it's going to need resin exhaust and everything, so at the end of the day, I may as well have bought the, the Great War Hobbies kit, but hey. Um, but it's... Um, yeah, Kitty Hawk, certainly not for the beginner, but I really, really like them. Um, I'm building a Kitty Hawk now for a video that I'm working on, and it's got some mistakes in the instructions. There's um, mistakes in the orientation of parts and everything, and I'm covering all that in the build. So if you want to build that model when you see the video, it will all be included in there so you can uh, you can build it. But, um, you know, lovely subject, lovely colour schemes, lovely box art. 
just a shame about the instructions. Hey, I've just realised one of my favourite manufacturers and I forgot all about them. So I'm going to put this one here. I'll, I'll put it in the right point in the uh, alphabetical list, if you like. But um, I'm doing this at the end. Um, Meng. Um, I can't, they're pronounced Ming. Beautiful model kits. Generally, um, 35th scale modern uh, military ground equipment, generally. Um, they do some aircraft, they've now got into ships, they've done some comic stuff and everything like that. But uh, generally, 35th scale ground equipment. Beautiful kits, um, very, very well engineered. Tend to be a little pricey in the UK. Now, I would seriously recommend, I support a local hobby model shop and everything. But for example, this kit here, I think retails over £100. And I got it from China for about 45 You know, so when the price difference is that much... Um, these days things are changing because the postage and everything is going up but generally men kits are beautifully engineered you can see you've got individually bagged sprues here I've done a review of this um, if you want to go see it but individually bagged sprues you know all beautifully wrapped all beautifully packaged this model actually got a little damaged in transit but the kit was okay you can see it's got a couple of holes in the box here um, but um, <clears throat> other than that it's absolutely fine um, and really, um, you know, there's really not too much to say about them. Others, they're, they're bloody good kits. One of the biggest downfalls with them of late, I've noticed, has been sprue ejector pins sticking out everywhere. Uh, this one may not be as guilty. I mean, you can see it's got sprue ejector barks all the way down here in the chassis rails, which all need to be um, filled. Um, ejector pin marks everywhere. That's that's one of Meng's big problems, I think. But also, they have these. Here you go, like these here. You've got these sticking out. I think they call them Z pins, and they need to be broken off. And they're everywhere on certain kits. That M911 is just covered in them. Um, so yeah, worth looking out for. You know, be careful with the assembly, um, and just double check everything before it goes together and now I'm gonna to have to rebox this after us because I've now got it so it won't go back in but basically looking at it here we've got the we've got color call outs here for our um for our different models that we can build and we've got I believe six yes we've got six versions here and the nice touch is they actually tell you what they are okay so victory parade Russia 2018 Tricolor Russia's Arctic Forces, Russia 2015. So they've got all the, the colour callouts here for the different ones you can build and they tell you where they're from. So that's uh, nice to see. Um, then the actual instruction manuals are always very nice with Meng. You're going to get sprue call out, I believe, will be at the back. Yeah, there you go. Sprue call outs at the back. Absolutely tiny. If you are a little bit short sighted like me, you might want to zoom that in on your scanner and just enlarge it if you want to check but um you know you've got lots of photo actually there you've got some decals you've got rubber tires vinyl tires which is a shame and then you've got your color call outs here and they're calling out meng and Akrison. so meng is a meng have got in bed with ak so now meng have their own paints manufactured by ak my advice is get something else ak real color paints these here are lovely Okay, really, really good. One of the best out there. AK in the bottle, like the Viejo bottles like this. Oops, throwing this across the room. AK in the bottles like this, I wouldn't touch with a barge pole. Um, I've just had a question asked uh, on what I think about AK Active Interactive Paints. And um, I answered it by saying I tried them and they're now in the bin. So basically, that's, uh, that's my thoughts on that one. So yeah, Meng. Beautiful models, beautiful instruction layouts, always very crisp, always very clear. Generally, sort of sub assembly type instructions. Um, you know, there's no reason why a fairly new modeler, and this is not for a beginner, but there's no reason why a fairly new modeler couldn't pick this up and have a go. So, um, there we go. So, I'm going to turn the camera, whoops, I left my colour call out. So, I'm going to turn the camera off now, get this one sorted, and then I'll come back. Okay, next off the block, Mini Art. Again, this is one I bought second hand. Mini Art, if you're into your AFE kits and you like lots of parts and you like lots of detail, this is a manufacturer you will like. If you're the sort of person that likes to throw models together and then spend all your time painting on it, Mini Art is not for you. 
um, you can see here 467 parts in this little for this little 35th scale truck 86 PE parts it's ridiculous um, I think it's hilarious to do a version of this cut it's probably less than a quarter of the parts so again you can see here we've got color call outs on the instructions all our parts are as I say this is second hand so it's, it's hard to tell but all the bags here are open but you can see here we've got multitudes of small sprues and this is mini arts thing um, they always have lots of these they must have some very small injection molding machines but they've got lots of these tiny sprues but you as you can see the detail the detail is is, is stunning but if you're not into building models for the building you want to just paint them the mini art are not for you um you know they've got plastic tires rather than horrible vinyl tires they've got tire lettering on the tires you know you've got all this texture on the seats here you've got all the framing for the roof i mean you know the engine parts here there's hundreds of engine parts it's a it's a beautiful beautiful model there's two photo etch sheets there you know as i say it's a beautiful model there's no doubt about it but you know it will drive you around the bend if you're just into building them to paint them again with mini art because of their complexity the instructions are generally very complex and really not aimed at the beginner um i've only built a couple of mini art kits and i've never really found that it, mistakes in the instructions but it's something you uh so you need to be on the lookout for because they are so complex but um as i say you know look at all those little different parts there just for the transfer box it's it's uh quite involving but it's something I love because I love multiple part kits so very very nice manufacturers they do a lot of tanks with a lot of interior detail you know thousands of parts in a 35th scale tank um, worth looking out for I, I believe they're very accurate um, I believe they've got a very good very good reputation for accuracy the plastic is gorgeous to work with really really nice also on a par with ICM. Now, I don't have an ICM kit here to show you, but ICM, again, beautiful models. You know, thoroughly recommend them to anyone. Um, the plastic is a joy to work with, as with Mini Art. But uh, they're a, um, a company from Ukraine. So, um, you know, and it says on here, modelers 14 years and over. I would say modelers of 44 and over, really, with a lot of patience <laughs> and uh, some, some level of insanity. So, Revell. Um, let's look at old Revell first. This is an old Revell 32nd scale BF109. This is the beauty of Revell. Look at the price of that, $22.99. Now, if this was a Tamiya kit, a 32nd scale BF109, it would be over £100. The Tamiya kit would probably be a lot better. But a lot better in what way? It would be more accurate. The box would be a lot nicer. There would be more parts. There would probably be more colour call-outs. The decals may be nicer, although Tamiya decals can be a bit hit and miss. The surface detail would probably be finer. But when you look at this for $22.99, okay, end opening boxes, which are horrible, and Revell, I wish you'd stop using them. At least the cardboards are getting a bit thicker. Um, pretty much individually bagged, you've got, you know, you've got those two little sprues in with that one there. But you can see the detail is lovely, the surface detail is lovely, the moulding is very, very crisp and clean. And then we've got these sprues here. And as you can see, what Revell do, this is one of their hallmarks, everything is bagged up and then taped up nice and tight so it can't all slide around and damage each other. Now again on here, we've got no rivet detail, but I believe there wouldn't rivet detail on the real thing. And we've got um, panel lines. OK, now there's going to be some issues. There's some inaccuracies of this model. For instance, you've got harnesses molded on there, which is not to everyone's taste. But for a kit to build for a beginner out of the box for $22.99, this is an absolute gem. You've got clear parts there, which are lovely, nice and crystal clear. You've got a two different types of uh, canopy there. You've got the later version there and you've got the earlier version there. Um, you know, really, really nicely done. One thing that is very strange on this kit is here. That's the thing there. Okay, so you can see this. <laughs> this is a little <laughs> joke for the modelers out there. This line here is molded in clear. Okay, and the reason it's molded in clear is because next to the pilot, there is a glass tube. 
so he could see the fuel flow. OK, so he could see if he had no fuel flowing through that tube and it would sit next to him to his right. Now, the only reason this is made in clear is so that you can have that clear part in the in the uh, cockpit. What have Ravel done? They've put the bloody sprue connector on the clear part that you want to be having visible in the cockpit. You can see these two raised areas here. They're two pieces of rubber with um, clips around them. OK. That's what they are. They're rubber, they're rubber hoses with clips around them. And then this is a metal pipe. This is a metal pipe. And this here in the middle is the glass. And that's where they've put the bloody sprue connector. And they've put it on the top. So it's the first thing you're going to see when you look in the cockpit is that with a bloody... I mean, come on, Ravel. But um, other than that, this is a beautiful model. It's got some issues. You can get some resin upgrades for it. And uh, well worth getting. I've got the Alley Cat set. Um, but again... Beautifully done, beautifully moulded, goes together like a dream, $22.99. Now instructions, decals are going to be lovely, Ravel decals always go down very nice. Um, these are researched and designed by AirDoc, okay. So I'm not sure who mind, they're printed in Italy, so they may be cartograph, but they are very, very nice, very, very thin, matte, um, and will go down beautifully. You know, minimum carrier film, really, really nicely done. Instructions on the older Revell kits, like this, are... This is why I've got an older Revell and a new Revell to show you. So you've got these simple black and white... You've got your sprue call-outs there. You've got these simple black and white um, instructions showing you where everything goes. And everything's good. There's that tube I was talking about, and the only bit that you see has got the... Oh, um, so yeah, they're very good, but uh, for the beginner they may be a little bit difficult to follow, but you know, not impossible. You know, it can be done. Uh, the other thing with Ravel is when they do their colour callouts, they use their own paints only, and they have some very strange names like light olive matte, okay, number forty-five, uh, black silky matte, that's semi-gloss black. Um, so you need to find the colours you're going to use. If you're not going to use Ravel paints. Because they also do this thing where they bloody mix them. So instead of making a light blue paint, they have you mix blue and matte and white to make a light blue. So, you know, not the best, but for the price and the quality of the kit you're getting, it's um it's quite steady. Now I'm gonna pause this and put that away because I don't want to be doing that on camera. Okay, so here's newer Revel. This is a, a car and hour truck, Land Rover. Um, and you can see that on here, this is one 2019, so this is very very new. One other thing I will say about Ravel, it's always worth looking on the box. It says made in. This one's made in Poland. If it's Ravel's own product, they're generally made in Ravel, Germany or, or Poland. If it's not, if it's a rebox, it will generally say the country it's come from. Now, Ravel are famous for reboxing Hasegawa kits. So, for instance, they're one of their Stukas. I'm not going to say which one it is. I can't remember which model number it is. But one of their Stukas is the old Ravel kit, which is raised panel lines and everything. But one of their Stukas is a reboxed Hasegawa kit. Um, and it's absolutely beautiful. And it's about half the price of the Hasegawa kit, if you can find it. And it will say on here, made in Japan. They also um, rebox uh, ICM. Um, they rebox... trying to think who else. I think they've done some Italy reboxes. Um... But they basically, they'll rebox anybody's kits. Um, and the way to tell is just look on there. If it's made in Japan, made in Ukraine. Um, I'm trying to think of other other manufacturers they've reboxed. There are lots out there. So worth looking at. It's like with um, Italeri, they're kind of linked with Tamiya. So you will get some crossovers with the two. But um, this kit here, I've done a review of it. So the, the, um, the, the box is open, the bags are open. You can see in here, this is the new style of Ravel. Now, I'm not going to pull it all out, but it's very, very chunky. Again, it's all bagged separately or bagged tightly together. You know, it's it's really, really nice. Um, the instructions are really aimed at the beginner. You've got decal sheet there, which is very nice. Being a car, it's going to be a lot more simple. You've got some colour images here about what to do. You've got here um, some call-outs, um, some legends going through the instructions, and it's telling you what it's all for, you know, paint, optional, make a hole. Um, and then you've got your colours here. Again, all Ravel colours, which is a pain. 
um, and again you're mixing so that's a pain and then you've got your sprue call out so you can see everything is really spaced out and made easy for you to see and then we've got these color call outs on the instructions with colored in areas very very simple you know two parts there three parts there two parts there three parts there very very simple laid out instructions very easy to follow so ideal for the beginner particularly the younger younger beginner um so yeah highly recommend it again value for money i think Ravel are probably the best kits out there bar none um they are amazing uh they Another thing it's worth remembering with Ravel, put those decals in the instructions, when you see a kit released, um, such as like the 30 second scale Junkers 88, or the uh, Heinkel 119, or uh, the BF 109 there, um, get it. Not because I've left the bloody body out. Get it because Ravel tend to discontinue their kits. They do tend to come back, but it could be you know a good couple of years before it comes back so if you see something and you fancy it get it because you know the prices I've got two of their Arado kits um, which are now out of production now I've seen those kits going for £10 at model shows when they were in production and then all of a sudden they were out of production and people were paying up to £60 for them on eBay so um, worth remembering um, so let's have a little look at Tacum, and I think we'll have a break. So Tacum is next off the block. This is my Tacum G6 Rhino. The box is very tatty. It came from a, a Polish company who basically put this in a box that was like very, very soft and it just got completely and utterly crushed during delivery. But the kit is absolutely fine. Um, but the packaging on the box was awful. Tacum again, fantastic manufacturer up there with the big boys really really nice um beautifully molded lovely sprues individually bagged sprues saying that there's two together there um but really really beautifully molded very very well engineered kits and beautifully designed to be built and as you can see here we've got our instructions all bagged up we've got our photo etch bagged up we've got decals separately bagged up there and then when you get into the instructions You know, really beautifully made books, always the same, always sealed up. So if you get your Tacum kit, you pick it up at the shop and the instructions aren't in a bag, check that the bag hasn't been thrown away because your instruction bag has usually got your photo etch decals, wire, whatever might be in there. You can see beautifully laid out, you've got a couple of views of the actual model there. And then you go into the instructions, again, all your, all your um, hints and tips there. We've got our sprue layouts here, okay, and then we get into the build, all right. Now, here they're giving you the colour callouts, and they're all in AMIG, so you'll have to do your, um, your cross-referencing there. But you can see the instructions are done in like a 3D black and white CAD image, which makes things a little bit easier to see where parts go going forward. So, you know, if you're kind of wondering where that handle's going to end up, you can see here that it's, it's sticking out there. Um, Again, we're using the old heated screwdriver for steering parts, which is something from the 60s. But hey, you know, it works. Um, again, as I say, decals called out, colours called out, really, really nicely laid out. Great build sequences. But the one thing you have to watch for with Tacum is they tend to have sprue connection points in strange places. I don't know if I'll be able to find one on here, but they will have the sprue connection points. Now, this all looks good, actually. But they'll have sprue connection points like on a panel like this here say and the sprue if this is the edge of the panel the sprue connection will come over the edge okay so the sprue connection is kind of like that on the part so you have to cut it away the trouble is they don't have the sprue connection on the back side they have it on the front side and they particularly do it with, like with wheel rims and stuff where you've got to then sand around the wheel rim and get it absolutely perfect when they could have come off the back side where the tire is going to go and it's something they um they tend to do a lot and it's a pain in the bum. Um, I'm trying to see if I've got an example of it here. The other thing you can watch for with Tacum is these, these uh, ejector pins on the back where they're raised. You need to break them off because they'll sometimes foul your assembly. Um, but it does look like on this one we don't have the issue I was talking about. 
So I can't show you, unfortunately. No, it's good. This one's good. Um, but uh, if you want to see my, look at my review of my Frisch Crown, and uh, you'll see it on there a lot. I did a build review of that Frisch Crown crane. But um, yeah, really, really nice, um, nice colour call outs at the back. Again, they're sort of, you know, in bed with Ammo Mig, which is a shame. But um, just do cross referencing to find all the colours. And, uh, and there you go. But as you can see, very easy laid out. I would say a beginner could tackle this, no problem. Um, so there we go. So I'll get this one put away and then I'll be back. Okay, so here we go, Tamiya. Now this is old Tamiya. Um, and as you know, if you know me, I had to feature the B-52. This is a 100 scale kit, a very unusual scale, but it's from 1973. And the reason I'm featuring this is to show you old Tamiya. So when people tell you Tamiya is the best, Tamiya is awesome, go get Tamiya, you can't go wrong. I just want to show you that's not always the case. So this is, um, as I said, it's a 100 scale kit, which is an unusual scale. So it's a, uh, it's a nice size. If 144th is too small for you and 72nd is too big, it's a nice size. They do a range of um, 100 scale aircraft. But as you can see here, we've got raised panel lines. Okay, there's no recessed detail on it at all. We've got the lines here where the decals go. So it's just like Monogram did. Um, you know, it's not, it's not the best, but at least they haven't got toy like features like separate air brakes and stuff. Um, but you've got the, the wings here hanging off the ends, off the tips, off these sprues. You know, they could easily get damaged. We've got um, engines here with no real detail at all. We've got intakes there. I'm not sure what the fit's going to be like. Got the exhaust there. At least they've got some cones moulded into them. Pylons with raised detail. Um, but again, you know, it's all very, very simple. Okay. So, but again, it's nearly 50 years old. And we've got our clear, clear parts there on our bombs. At least they've done the canopy in one, which is a nice touch. So you can mask off the clear bits and paint it rather than have to do decals and stuff like you do with the Revell. But um, there we go. So we've got instructions here. So we've got two sets of instructions. We've got a colour call out in colour. So that'll make a lot of people happy. And we've got decal sheets there. Now, Tamiya decals tend to be hit and miss. What these are going to be like, I do not know. But um, we can see they're fairly simple. But um, we've got two sets of instructions for some reason yeah these are Japanese and these are in English so we'll look at the English ones so we can understand what it is we're reading if we're English or English speaking or you can understand English and not Japanese because I don't understand Japanese and I can't read it so basically we've got some history of the aircraft there it's telling us about the uh, the crosswind landing with the turning undercarriage and you can see here it still goes on about the you know the B1 down here and there's the F111 and all the different variants. There's a lot of history in here to learn. And then it goes on about the, the building of the kit. So all they're doing is giving you a few words there, just telling you about to, um, you know, about hints and tips about building the kit, mixing up to make your zinc chromate paint. I'm just looking here. they do have a sprue, sprue call out on the back sheet there. And then the instructions are very, very clear, very, very concise and very well laid out for the beginner, as Tamiya always have been. Um, and they've got their colour call outs down here. You've got your zinc chromate for your bomb bay and your, your wheel bays and everything. Now they've got the front undercarriage bay incorrect on this one. The rear's, the rear's correct, but the front is incorrect. But that's an accuracy thing. We're not talking about accuracy. But um, you can see you've got your bulkheads there going in. And all very, very clear, very, very well laid out. Now I haven't built this kit. I do have two of them. I haven't built it, so I don't know what the fit is like. But um, you know, if it goes together nicely, it should build into a beautiful model. If you've got to do lots of sanding and stuff, you're going to lose all your raised panel lines, so it's probably best to just sand them all off. Um, got this crazy plastic hook. You're going to hang your model off the ceiling on this moulded plastic hook. Yeah, right. And they're telling you here, if you're going to have your flaps up, you cut the uh, cut the actuators off. And you've got all your different bits and pieces going in there for the end of carriage. And then you've got two different colour schemes called out. And again, they're telling you what they are, when they're from, and all of that. So really, really nice touch. So again... Beautiful instructions, very well laid out, very, very simple plastic parts, raised detail, maybe fit issues, I don't know, but um, on the whole, a very nice model. Now we come on to stuff like this. This is new Tamiya. This is from, I say it's new, this is 2016. It feels like yesterday I bought this, but um, this is one of their finest ever. Um, 
stunning. Uh, there is no other word for it. The only thing I don't like about this kit, it doesn't have the option to have the flaps and everything hanging out the wings, but that's why I've got the AMK one. But you can see here straight away one of the beauties of Tamiya. Now, this is a real help, and, and a, certainly a beginner could build this. Now, if you look at the cockpit canopy here, okay, the glazing, you can see that they've included a lot of the actual fuselage below it. And the reason they do that is so that when you glue this on, your glue is on a panel line away from the clear part. So all your worries about gluing clear parts are gone because they've had the sense to do that. Now, why the manufacturers don't do it, I do not know. Some manufacturers have some frame, okay? So you glue it on and you have, you know, you, you're, you're gluing very close to the edge of the clear. Some manufacturers, like Meng with their Comet, they actually have the clear part gluing into the frame. So the edge of the clear part is the edge that you actually glue, which is the most ridiculous design idea anybody's ever had. That's where you get a case of, you know, Tamiya are modelers making models for modelers. Um, same as like wing that wings are. But you get some people that do some really stupid things. And also you've got these beautifully designed sprues with the, 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 the sprue over the top so the parts can't get damaged. Individually bagged parts all in these square sprue frames so parts can't get damaged knocking around in the box. Beautiful surface detail, very, very crisp, clear panel lines, very, very crisp, crisp, clear shut lines. You know, everything's very beautifully laid out, beautifully molded, really, really stunning. When we come down here to the instructions that are on the book, I'm not gonna open them, but they are very, very clearly laid out, very well done. Um, I'll tell you what, I will open them. I always said I'd never open these, but hey-ho. Right, so, so we've got here, we have got a bag of stuff, and in here we've got our colour call out, so again, some people will be happy. So we've got the two different versions there. Okay, three different versions, sorry. Okay, which is a nice touch. We've got a bag of screws and washers and stuff there. We've got some history and information about the aircraft in all the different languages, which again is a nice touch. And then we've got our instruction manual. And on here, typical Tamiya, they're suggesting the tools. They've got all the colour callouts in their own colours, which is a nice touch. Um, these TS and AS, they're the aerosols, so you can always make those colours up yourself. With, with these Tamiya colours, it's easy to cross-reference them. Um, and also, I should imagine soon, they'll start showing the LP colours in their instructions. Um, you can see hints and tips on painting and holding parts and gluing them and everything. And then you've got your three different versions here. Uh, they're telling you here the parts that aren't going to be used. And you'll probably find in here there's no sprue callouts. Here we go. See, Tamiya have, for some reason, have stopped doing sprue callouts. It's sometimes on a separate sheet, but they often don't bother with them at all. So you can see they're not there. So straight away with this, you're into the cockpit, building up the cockpit, all very, very clear, all the colours called out, and all the different options denoted in the instructions at the point where you need to worry about it. Making sure you get the mesh right on the folding wings. Um, and this kit, if you look at uh, Spencer Pollard's channel, you can see that you can basically build this kit up in sub-assemblies. And literally, this front cockpit, this front nose section where it goes into the fuselage, you can actually clip it in after it's finished and the panel line is that perfect, it doesn't need to be glued. You can paint it all separately and then clip it together. The wings can actually slide over the wing inserts. It is a stunning model. Some say this is the best plastic model ever made. Um, they could be right. They could well be right. And maybe the D is better. Uh, but as I say, the only thing for me personally that I don't like about it is the fact that it doesn't have the flaps removable, uh, sorry, extendable or extended flaps and slats, should I say. So well, I'm going to get this all packaged back up um, and then we'll move on to something else. But you can just see, look at the detail on here, look how crisp it is and the moulding. It's just, you know, when people say to you, get Tamiya, you can't go wrong. Um, ben, generally, that's later Tamiya, that's sort of 2010 onwards, okay? Um, and the other thing is, or well, maybe 2008 onwards, the other thing is people will say they're shake and bake, which certainly for me, I sometimes get a little bored of. Um, this model, you could basically clip the parts off, paint them, 
glue it together, clip a part off, paint it, glue it on, and just go like that. You know, they're military kits, you just clip all the parts off, glue it all together, and then paint it. It can be a little boring, shall we say. Um, certainly these models are great. If you want to build the model and get it and just get it built so you can you know, play with the painting and the weathering and everything, then, you know, fill your boots. But some say they're a little too simple. Um, and the fact they do go together so easy means you're not doing any filler work. You're not doing any scene clean up. It's just, you know, it just builds itself, basically. I don't know. Um, each to their own, I guess. So I'm going to get this put away and then we're going to move on to something else. OK, trumpeter. Generally 35th scale military subjects, um, but they do everything. They do 200 scale ships, they do 700 scale ships. But generally their biggest range, I think, is 35th scale military vehicles. So this is a, a smaller trumpeter kit. I'm showing you a smaller one because I have a smaller version of it. Uh, most of the kits I've shown you today are sort of very expensive. And unfortunately, I don't have cheaper kits to show you. But um, it just gives you, I'm just trying to give you an idea of the manufacturers, which is what's been asked for. So Trumpeter, you've got Trumpeter, you've got Hobby Boss, you've got um, I Love Kit, and you've got Merit Models, and they're all pretty much the same. Um, there's no real difference in them. They're, Trumpeter tend to always be grey plastic, Hobby Boss tend to always be the sand-coloured plastic for the military vehicles, um, but they're very much the same in their instruction layouts and everything and the, the way they're built. Now, one of Trumpeter's biggest plus points is the packaging. You can see here straight away, we've got a very solid cardboard box. We've got a box within the box with the main parts of the tub, or the hull, should I say, individually wrapped, and they've got the foam around them to protect them. We've got our photo etch parts there and our clear parts there underneath, all well protected so they can't get damaged. You've got all our sprues individually bagged. You've got here, you've got two sprues together. You've got all our track track links there, all individually bagged. Um, generally, wheels are paired up and everything. But you can see that generally, I mean, this, this foam, which is a lovely thing that Trumpeter do, they have this foam to protect smaller parts. Really, really nicely done, beautifully done, um, and beautifully packaged. You get your colour call outs, okay, and they're giving you. Mr. Hobby, Viejo, Model Master, Tamiya and Humbrol. The good thing is they're giving you those different options. The bad thing is they're generally wrong. So the problem is they'll call out these colours and they're generally incorrect. The other problem I find with Trumpeter, they have these two different versions. OK, there's that one there and there's that one there. They don't tell you what period they're from. They don't tell you what nationality they are. They don't tell you if they're... Um, uh, a, a display vehicle or an actual vehicle you don't even know if it's real and generally these camouflage patterns can be wrong so you know it's 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 worth doing your homework and checking first to see exactly what it is you're doing because they give you nothing the other thing trumpeter don't do they never give you any color call outs going through the instructions they never tell you what color anything should be even like in interiors of aircraft and stuff you just have to guess and do your research um, instructions are generally the same. The larger kits have a fold-out kind of end-on fold-out book. But they follow the same sort of um, logo all the way through their kits with Hobby Boss as well. You've got a few words here about decal application, a few hints and tips there. And then you're straight into the build. You've got sprue call-outs there, which is nice. But as you can see, there's no colour call-out. Instructions tend to be a little complex, but... You know, not so bad for somebody who's got a couple of kits under their belt. OK, and you've got your track links going up together there. They sometimes have their build sequence a bit funny, like adding the wheels now and then adding your tracks. You would probably be doing your hull and painting it all and weathering it first before you did that. But uh, never mind. Um, but as you can see, generally on the whole, going together, just, you know, and it tends to, they, for me, they tend to be kind of, I don't know, there's nothing generally exciting about them. Um, they generally have errors as well. Um, no shapes on aircraft are a big one. But, um, you know, Trumpeter, the one good thing with Trumpeter, they probably have the, one of the biggest catalogues on the planet and they seem to produce a new kit every couple of weeks. It's just incredible. Um, but there does tend to be errors with them. You know, if you followed my Titanic or you're following my Titanic hull, you'll know that's a major, major reshape on that one and the, you know the, the the 200 scale bismarck hull is incorrect 
the um, Iowa Hull is incorrect, or along with Missouri. Um, you know, and there's all sorts of errors. The 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 48 scale submarine accuracy wise is just forget it. Um, and it's just you know, but at the end of the day, if you want to build a model that looks like something, at the end of the day, you know, you build that 200th Titanic, you will end up with a beautiful model that looks like Titanic. But as far as accuracy goes, it's um, miles away. So that's Trumpeter. Now, as I say, you could, you know, there's going to be a million reviews on on uh, YouTube of Trumpeter kits and everything. So the best thing to do is have a look and make your own mind up. But basically, what this video is about is is the kit and how it goes together and the instructions and what you're getting in your box and everything. Trumpeter, they're okay. Right. So we're getting near the end now. Here's one you didn't think you were going to see, Wingnut Wings. Now I've got a few Wingnut Wings kits, I've picked this one out because it's the front of the <laughs> front of the pile. So this is the AMC DH2 Lance Walker uh, and this is one of their special series. And what Wingnut, Wingnut Wings tend to do is they'll do a kit and then it'll get cancelled and, uh, and that's it and then they fell, sell for a million pounds on eBay. And then they'll re-release it with a figure. So this is kit number 32606. So bear in mind you can actually get this as an aircraft on its own. But um, Wingnut Wings, people say they're one of the best manufacturers out there, and I think they are. What I like about Wingnut Wings, they are kits designed by model makers for model makers. Um, stuff like the sprue attachment points are considered, uh, you know, that stupid mistake I showed you with that Revell 109, you know, they wouldn't do that. Um, the other thing I like about them, individually bag sprues, as many manufacturers do now, but they always make the sprues to the side of this resin figure. Ignore that because it's part of an extra, extra part of the kit. Got some clear parts in there. But they always make their sprues to the side of the size of the box. So basically, you know, it ain't gonna get damaged. You've got this solid plastic frame all around, it ain't gonna get damaged. You've got these few little extras that add in here, and they do tend to do their engines on separate sprues, because obviously this engine, you can see it's not it's not done as part of a AMC DH2, it's, it's, it's a known 100 horsepower mono soupape. <laughs> so um, there you go. Um, but they are beautifully detailed kits. Um, their range of World War I stuff is, is second to none. Unfortunately now no longer made. Um, there was some talk about a show in New Zealand or something having them on, on display, but I've seen nothing on any, any, anything else. I've seen nothing on their Facebook page or anywhere else said anything about Wingnut Wings coming back. Beautiful decals, um, they go down a treat. They really do go down well. Um, be very, very careful with the larger ones. Probably best not use setting solutions on the larger ones. Um, and then you've got your little bit of photo etching there. Now, Wingnut Wings seem to manage to make parts from plastic that other people don't. Um, and the other good thing about Wingnut Wings is their instructions. They are just absolutely gorgeous. You you generally find with Wingnut Wings, you don't really need any extras. You can buy extras, but you don't really need them. Um, and also you will find that you don't need any reference material because it's all in here. So again, we've got color call outs here in Tamiya, Humbrol and your FS standards there. You've got some hints and tips about building here. Um, all your sprues there with parts that aren't used. You've got your resin figure there. As I say, this isn't something you get with every model. This is just part of this special set. That's why I haven't sort of included it, if you like. Um, and then straight away, you're into the build. Now, those of you that like colour callouts, this is what Wingnut Wings do. They not only give you the colours all the way through of every single individual part and also the options, they show you it what it looks like when it's built and painted. So if there's any doubt of how this goes together, you've got that to look at there. OK. So if you do an early production, you're drilling out these holes here. OK, they've got an E and an L on there, so that's early and late. All right, and then you've got your canvas moulded in there. And then again, we've got pictures here of the genuine engine. You're building up your engine here, and then you've got pictures of the real engine there to work to. Then we've got pictures all the way through of the real aircraft. OK, telling you to remove some raised areas there. Again, pictures of the real aircraft, and they're showing you these parts they're showing you how they refer on the real aircraft. So obviously there's some reason about how the way they fit or something. They're showing you that, making sure the wheels are square. And then you've got your rigging diagrams. And they're telling you the size of rigging to use. And they're showing you the, how all the rigging goes. So that'll drive you absolutely crazy. So you've got some photo etch parts there for your rigging and some more there. OK, 
okay and then there's again pictures of the real aircraft who else gives you that you know really really nice and then there's the uh, figure painted up as well and they're telling you the colors to use and again we've got color call outs here with all your decal placements and everything and then again there's the this is obviously a museum display or something of the aircraft and then we've got other pictures there of the real thing more reference pictures here okay and then we've got all of the people that worked at Wing Nut Wings I've actually met Richard great guy um, wonder what he's doing these days so there you go um, that's all your parts and then you've got your, your call outs there what should be in the box and if you've got any missing parts contact Wing Nut Wings so you know really are beautiful models um, not really aimed at the beginner but some of their simpler kits there's no reason why a beginner couldn't have a go um, you know if you're not going to go mad with uh, super detailing and adding rigging and stuff i see no reason why somebody couldn't have a go now finally we've got here uh zukimure zukimure incorporated down here you can see it uh, glossy box this is the uh, he 219 which is a gorgeous gorgeous model also available from Ravel but as I said earlier the Ravel one used to be like 29 pound I think or 39 pound this is over a hundred so you know but this one's got a lot more detail and this I believe has correct engines the Ravel one's engines are, are too far up they got they got too much dive on them from the from the mold but um beautiful model kits very very complex in design you can see here on the side of the box that the all of the internal wing structure is included, all the internal fuselage structure is included. It's just like building the real aircraft, if you like, and then you cover it all up. So, you know, it's, it's up to you how you display. You might want to display it with panels open and stuff. But again, stunning packaging, beautiful boxes. We've got some resin figures in here and some other resin parts as well. Um, we've got a correction there for that part there. Beautiful decal sheet window masks all in there in the box okay then we've got our instructions here this that's a fee that's not instructions that's just some advertising for some other bits and pieces you can get okay there and then we've got our instruction book now I'm not going to get all this out but you can see in here everything is beautifully molded individually bagged on square sprues okay and then you've got clear parts there all protected with film and everything and beautifully, beautifully done, beautifully packaged, and really, really nicely done. Undercarriage there. Okay, you can see those wheels are beautiful. You've got tires with no lettering on them, but I'm not sure if the real ones did or not. And you can see lots and lots of interior detail. Now I'm gonna show you the instructions, um, and that's gonna tell you how good these kits are. So again, they've got like a historic look to the instructions. It's almost like, you know, old fashioned paper, like it's an old manual or something. And they're telling you all about the guns, Shrek music there, all about the guns they had and everything, and about the engines. And then all about the aircraft, the Midnight Hunter. And then you've got different versions here that you can build. And then here you've got like your chapters going through. Uh, and it's all in German. Because it's a German aircraft, Teal is part. So you've got Teal, Teal 2, or Tyler, I think it is. Tyler 2, Tyler 3, you know, going through. And then you've got your engine assembly here. So at the front of it, they're showing you this is the different steps you're going to go through and then this is your finished engine with all painted and everything and you can see it's absolutely beautiful all the color call outs here are in uh, Vallejo so that's okay you can easily cross reference those if you look at the Vallejo website they have a beautiful section in there with every other manufacturer's paint I think um, cross reference to their own paint so really really nice touch that so you've got your engine going together here, you can see inside the engine you've got com rods and pistons and everything. Again, it's, it's all going to get covered up. And then you've got your, your uh, fuel injection stuff going in there in the middle. And then you've got the engine here being built up. You can see you've got your com rods in there and they're telling you to paint it all up. They're even telling you to match the com rods up, even though you're never going to see them. So you can see the engine alone is a very, very complex, very beautifully assembled part. And then we're into the cockpit. Okay, this is one of the first ever, world's first ever ejection seats. Again, they're showing you with it all assembled and painted up. And you've got all these oxygen chambers and cables and everything that you're just going to cover up. So that's all going in there. And then you're going to build up your fuselage. Okay, so all that cockpit, all that lovely detail around the sides is all getting covered up now. But again, 
all the colours all called out and showing you the actual plastic parts built up. And as you can see, just like um, Wingnut Wings, the, 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 the uh, instruction manual is just gorgeous. You can see here you've got all your guns, all your ammunition there laid out. And then you're onto your landing gear, which on the 219 is beautiful. Okay, so we got all of that there. Really, really nice. And then you've got all your um, antenna going on the front there. And on the whole, it's going to make for an absolutely stunning model. But at the back here, you've got your sprue call-outs and where to contact if you have any missing. Um, and you can also buy sprues as well if you want to buy them. So uh, there you go. So all in all, um, stunning is the word for Zuki Miure. But some say a little complex. Um, they're, they're a little like the Kitty Hawks, where... You've got many, many panels to make up a fuselage, which just makes things a lot more difficult to get everything to line up and, and get rid of all the seams and everything. So there we go. So that, I'm afraid, is that. Now, I wish I had a Zvezda kit to show you, but I can't think that I have. And the only one I've got is, um, is a very old Zvezda kit, so it's not a good advert for them. But Zvezda kits, I will tell you, uh, some of the, if you look back, I did a review of their Mustang, which is a 6x6 Russian truck. And I think it's the finest detailed 35th scale kit I've ever seen. Um, it's absolutely stunning. The biggest letdown for it is the vinyl tyres, which aren't very nice. And the other thing that's a big letdown for it is the, sorry, the vinyl tyres might be alright. But the actual windscreen, the clear part is awful. So, um, but Zvezda, fantastic manufacturer. Very reasonably priced kits and very, very nicely done. So there we go, guys. I hope you are still awake. <laughs> and I hope I didn't bore you too much and you might have just flicked through and picked up the manufacturers that you wanted to see. If there's anything I haven't shown you here that you want to see, just drop it in the comments below and, uh, and we'll go from there. But um, hopefully it's not been too boring and it's given you an insight into what the manufacturers do. So thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And, um, and I'll see you all soon with... Uh, a build video. Bye for now.